Welcome. If you uh, like this content, if uh, uh, you uh, want to see more of it, uh, I implore you to uh, hit the like button down there, the subscribe button, get your notifications going if you're into that, um, and uh, uh, possibly hit up the Patreon and become a contributing member to uh, make all of this possible. Right? Welcome to Indie Learning Music Tutor. I'm your tutor, Harry, and uh, today we are going to talk about intervals. Uh, when we talk about intervals, uh, what I mean by that is the space between the notes that we play. Um, when uh, we are playing music, uh, we play uh, notes. Uh, for example, C scale. Um, and each one of those notes uh, has a value in the scale, obviously. Um, uh, our uh, unison, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and octave. Uh, there are other scales that utilize uh, other notes in this 12 note space here. Um, you have a minor second, a minor third, a sharp four or um, flat five, also known as a tritone, a minor sixth, and a minor seventh. Uh, the reason why I work in the C scale is because it's very visually easy to see. Uh, your ivories are all your major scale tones and all of your incident, uh, accidentals, incidentals are the uh, ebony keys. So, um, uh, when we talk about playing music, and I've said this many times, uh, that we do not talk about the notes that we play so much as we talk about the space in between the notes. Um, how this works out uh, is, uh, scientifically speaking, we're moving air, that's measured in frequencies, uh, and um, uh, the difference in the notes creates an interval. Uh, and these intervals uh, are uh, calculated by our ears and then transferred to our brain. That's how we understand music. That's how we um, uh, assign emotion to it uh, subconsciously. Uh, it's how we understand uh, grooves and everything like that. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the different ratios and how uh, they interact, uh, how they cause, uh, how they resonate with the unison tone uh, and uh, how we can use those to manipulate the emotion in the, in the music that we are playing. So now I'm going to go over here and uh, do this. Okay, so our first note is the unison. Obviously, it's the note. Um, it is a one-to-one -one ratio because it's the same exact frequency. Right? doesn't matter if you're... Playing it lightly or playing it loudly, it's the same frequency, it's always going to register as the same. Um, uh, the next complicated, most more complicated note is the octave. It's the same note, it's just a different register. Uh, we could. That's the same ratio as that. Uh, this would be the second octave. Um, <clears throat> after that, we uh, we have our next compli most complicated ratios: the perfect fifth and fourth. Now they're not exactly the same uh, uh, ratio. Uh, the fifth is less complicated for our ears than the fourth. Uh, if you listen very carefully, if you're using headphones like I am, you will absolutely hear the consonants 
and the slight dissonance that happens there. Um, and there's a reason why. It's... Um, sort of like a uh, uh, blank note in, in, a, in a chord. It doesn't matter if this note is actually in the chord as much as, let's say, the third or, or the seventh. This, this note here doesn't ever really change unless you're dealing with a diminished chord, but we'll get more on that later. Um, our, our next most complicated uh, ratios here would be our major third and our major sixth. And again, these are not the same, but they are very closely related uh, as far as their level of dissonance or level of consonance. And one thing to note is that they're also a perfect fourth from each other. So between themselves, they create the same uh, uh, four to three ratio as our root to fourth, our third to sixth is the same ratio, same as our second to fifth. Uh, and then we start getting into much more complicated ratios. Uh, the, the single tone ratio, hear the dissonance it's a it's getting more dissonant and less consonant um, and this is a nine to eight ratio uh, if I didn't mention it the major sixth and the major th uh, major third are a five to three and a five to four ratio that's why they sound very or we can just we can they're they sound very similar because of the fact that they are equidistant from uh, uh, the, the tone, whether it be the tone or the octave above the tone, right? Now, um, our seventh uh, and our major second are very similar as well. Or in, in uh, sorry, our major seventh and our minor second, sorry. And there's a reason why. Because they are equidistant, again, from our root. Uh, and they are, uh, for the minor second, which is only used in like two modes, the Phrygian and the Locrian mode, uh, is a 16 to 15 ratio, and the major seventh is a 15 to 8 ratio, which is used in our major scale, and used in the Lydian scale with the sharp 4. Um, um, then going beyond that, uh, our uh, minor sixth, our minor third are also very similar in their dissonance level uh, with a six to three, five, uh, 63 for the minor third and a, uh, eight to five in the major third. Uh, so, uh, again, very similar, very similar distances from our, our root. That's where the the um, the minor difference between them comes from is that they're like a semitone-ish apart, but um, very similar feels 
uh, when it comes to the, the music. And then the most complicated uh, in the 12 tone equal, equal tone scale is our tritone. It's very dissonant from uh, our root. You can you hear you hear the tension, uh, and that's basically uh, what constants and dissonance is. It's sort of a measure of tension. Um, when we look at things like um, uh, our uh, pentatonic scale, it's uh, for the major root, second, third, fifth, sixth, and back to root, right? Five notes. Um, uh, basically, all the tensions the are taken out. Um, so, uh, what does this all mean? So, when we're creating music, um, what we want to do is we want to tell a story. Uh, and when we're telling a story, uh, we could talk all monotone like this and it would be a very uninteresting story uh, and that's not good for anybody uh, the listener doesn't want to hear it and uh, it becomes very uh, mind-numbing to play um, when we uh When we play with those intervals, when we're, when we're, combining them and, and moving through, uh, intervals is how we add inflection to our story. They, we can, uh, we can always add articulations and that, that's our punctuation marks, but how we talk is, is really dependent on how we use those intervals. Um, it's sort of like how we raise our pitch, we increase our emphasis in our voice. Uh, it's the same as using the intervals when we play music. So, um, this is the, I guess, first creative, really, uh, lesson that I'm doing. Uh, everything else was uh, based on uh, uh, technique and, and basic knowledge. Uh, so no matter which instrument you're playing, you could be playing a string instrument, you could be playing a piano, um, uh, any toned instrument. So uh, sorry, drum players, you're kind of screwed. Um, <laughs> um, uh, what I want you to do, and uh, I will make a, uh, a sheet for this, is you're basically going to really hammer in these notes. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and try to sing along with it because it will help you internalize um, the distance between these. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight. Now, I'm going to tell you my singing voice sucks. Uh, I can't sing worth the shit. So, um, sorry that you have, I have to put you through this, but you're going to have to do it for yourself as well. And I understand that you may not like your singing voice. Uh, it may suck too. But you're not doing this on stage. You're not. This is not a performance thing. This is a training thing. You're training your ears to understand the differences, because unless you have learned from a child uh, what each note is, uh, you will never have perfect pitch. It's it's very rare that someone can develop perfect pitch in their adult life. So, uh, with that being said, um, this is the best alternative for uh, us as adults. Uh, working with music um, so my suggestion is is dedicate 15 minutes a day to this really get to understand and know these intervals um, 
you know, start start with the the major uh, uh, arpeggio because that's the most common thing you're gonna come up against. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, five, one, five, one, five, one, five, one, three, one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, one, three, five, seven, so on and so forth. And again, I'm really, really sorry about my singing voice. <laughs> um, so uh, that is the uh, study of the day. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to expand on this and on the fretboard knowledge video that uh, I had done a couple weeks ago uh, in the near future. So if uh, this stuff interests you, uh, tune back in, I suppose. Uh, and um, uh, on a side note, uh, this will actually help you if you are trying to transcribe other people's music. So um, though this is a great creative tool, uh, to understand what note selection uh, you're really looking for to tell the story that you're telling with your music. Uh, if you are listening to someone else's music, this is also an amazing tool to uh, be able to figure out what they're playing. Because once you, once you hear what they're playing and you find that first note, you go... Look at that. <laughs> it fits. Uh, and um, it makes it uh, uh, a little less stressful. Uh, a little, you, you can always search. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I encourage, if you're really looking to find other people's music, <coughs> you can absolutely uh, use... Uh, 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 the internet as as the tool it's meant to be used for to find that information but uh, if you wish to uh, improve your musicianship uh, and find what works best for you when you're trying to cover someone else's music um, or if you're trying to cover someone else's music but you want to put your own flavor into it uh, learning vi via transcription is probably going to serve you a lot better than uh, just reading the sheet music and playing it um, by eye. Um, well, this has been fun, and <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to head off now. So, uh, thank you for joining me at Indie Learning Music Tutor. Uh, if you like this, you can always like, subscribe. Uh, you'll get a little get updates on uh, when I post new videos, uh, and um, I hope to see you soon.